Hi, my name is Tori Pritchett. Today is March 31st, 2023. And this week, there were 58 reported cases of COVID-19 in the Charlotte-Mecklenburg County area, which shows a 20% decrease over the last two weeks. Therefore, each subject is comfortable not wearing a mask. So today I have the pleasure of interviewing Ms. Jessica, and I'm going to give her the opportunity to introduce herself. Hi, I'm Jessica Polakar, Ops Manager for FedEx Ground. All right, Jessica, and where are you from? New York. New York. And how long have you been in Charlotte? Three and a half years. Three and a half years. So during the start of the pandemic, you were here? Yes. Okay. And when you think of that time, what comes to mind? Um, change, depression, grief, worrisome, um, and really not a good outlook on life because it really revamped everybody, parents, mothers, fathers, grandparents, it revamped everybody, okay. work culture, everything. And if you could elaborate on how things really did change drastically for you. Um, I'm a mother of two teenagers. During that time, my kids was transitioning from junior high to high school. And especially my youngest daughter, she was going from elementary to junior high. So she didn't experience the whole transition from elementary to junior high because her fifth grade year, she was home. So she went from everyday social with her friends to nothing. So now she's home and with the computer, which kids are used to the computer, but now she has to adapt to signing on. Well, for the first year, there was nothing. No school, no nothing. So even having to, me having to adapt with them having to be home and having to balance out work and the kids being home. Then when school came back into play, getting them back up to sign on the computer. Then once everything calmed down, now they had to revamp going back to school. So just that whole transition of elementary to now when she's going back to school, it's different kids. Some kids are in school, some kids are not. So just that whole social dynamic was lost completely for not even for adults, but mainly for the kids. So that was my biggest adjustment for her, period. So, and then my oldest daughter having a transition from, same thing, she went from junior high. So now when she go back to school, it's ninth grade year. So she fully didn't have that transition from junior to high school. And then my youngest daughter, she hit puberty at home. Mm. So you got COVID, which the world stopped. You're going through puberty, masking up, you know what I mean? All these different things. Then she's being scared because she has asthma. At the time, the, that was the biggest. You had asthma, they counted you out, basically. But it's just all those different things, reassuring the kids everything's going to be okay, and you not even knowing if everything's going to be okay. Or you going to work, because I was a central worker, working in group homes in a COVID house, they worry for me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So your kids worried about you, you're worried about the kids. So it just was like. It was a lot. A lot. So it took a toll on you. And how did you feel during that time? Was there even, was there any time for you to focus on like self care during that time? No. Nope. At all. Because nothing stops. Even though it was different programs out there for, you know, um, I don't I want to say, Lack of worries, not having to worry about rent. But once it stopped, you still got them bills there. So you still have to continue to work. Mm -hmm. You still got to feed your family, pay bills and all of us. And I'm the type of person that's like, no, like, yeah, okay, I have this stipend. But as soon as they lift this stipend, you're going to have this $1,800, $2,000 bill. Yeah. So, no, I still got to go to work. And then... I actually had in my village, which is my family, my mom took my kids for that year. They wasn't in school. So I was able to work. But then again, like I said, they still worried about me working in a COVID mm -hmm. house. I'm going in, gowning up, masking up. 
I had the sores on my face and everything because having to use the same mask because it was a shortage of masks. And then you go home having to mm-hmm. literally at the door strip. So it was no room for self care or That's nothing. But that means you did adjust quick though, you know, having, being that, you know, your mom was available, you know, to take the kids and stuff like that. That kind of worked out. Um, it's, I'm gonna, we're going to get off track a little bit. They they had a three day weekend, and cause remember COVID hit in March, middle yes. of March. They had a three day weekend. They was going anyway, cause to see their dad and my mom and everything. And that Saturday they was like, it's no school, so they wound up just like staying. Mm-hmm. So I had to send money, cause oh. they only went for like what two days. Yeah. So they only had clothes for two days. Yeah. So you know what I mean. So literally they was at my mom's house for a month for like three days out of the way. But that's off track. But, <laughs> but pretty much, you know what I mean. Just the whole like. Just shut down of uh, not knowing, you know, the what's to come. Mm-hmm. And then used to seeing them certain people. Then it's like, now I, I'm, I, have, I like to go to the store now. I have to order. And mm-hmm. all, uh, it just was a full. Yes, transitioning from, you know, being able to shop online and, you know, mm-hmm. having thinking like, hey, I don't want to go into the grocery store. Nope. You know, because, and then that. And then not even there too, where I, it took me to, I, I lost a parent years prior to COVID, but just those people who couldn't see their loved ones or ones that died mm-hmm. by themselves. Like, I'm not going to say I was lucky, but I was there when my father took his last breath. I can't imagine not being able to be there during that, mm-hmm. that time because I had that close relationship. Like, I was there. So just, it took me that mindset of that too. Just the unknown or worrying about somebody else or your family member going to the hospital because, I don't know, a cough and yes. a week later they're gone. Somebody who was fully healthy and now. Mm-hmm. So it just, it took, it take you to, it make you appreciate life way more. And not even that, it, it took me back on, now I'm just like, if it don't make me happy, if it ain't bothering my kids or my husband, I don't care. It's like I live a very stress-free life now. It is. I'm. I'm a. Is it is what it is. <laughs> it's black or white. It's no gray to me. That is. It is or it's not. And you feel like uh, during the pandemic, that's what you kind of transitioned to. That that that's the type of person you became. Yeah. Because before I would always worry. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just like I can't. You appreciate the little things. Yep, the real, the littlest of the littlest things. And it's crazy. I have these conversations. I tell everybody, we talk about my daughter. She she loves uh, quizzes and things like that. So we did a, what is your your love language? Come to find out, well, I knew mine is physical touch and words of affirmation. Mm-hmm. So I tell her all the time, like, now I'm more of a, I love you. So they're like, because <laughs> you never know. Yeah. Definitely. You know, I can't imagine not being able to tell my loved one. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I wasn't able to tell them anything. So I just, I just, now it's quality time. We sit, we watch movies, we do puzzles. I ordered so many games mm-hmm. and all the other, it, and it's really, I value time. And me and my mother was having a conversation. I have a family member. I don't want to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Why you don't want to? I don't have time. Like, you take me to another. I don't. I don't like giving nobody my energy. It's too much wasted energy giving you my energy. Mm-hmm. So I just leave people where they at. And I, I can definitely understand that. That's my self uh, recognition. That's my. What was the word you use earlier? Self care. Self care. Because <laughs> you, I could go get my nails done and all, that, but you still got to deal with everybody else around you. And yes. That's my. And everybody's different, Mm -hmm. and I completely understand that. Okay, so during that time, when you're saying all that, I hear you speaking about your mother a lot. Was she one of those ones who supported you? Yep, yep, very much so. Definitely. Very much so. And then having to worry about her as well, too, you know, because she has health problems and all those things. But luckily, she worked in the school system, Okay. so she was home. Mm. So she didn't have to go nowhere. I did the order, everything. Oh my goodness. No, nope. Y'all don't, nobody leaves the house. 
So you were there. In a way, yes. In a way, they was like, well, you're the lucky one. We in a three-bedroom apartment, and it's like six of us. And you home by yourself. I don't. Well, if y'all want to come here, whatever. <laughs> but I'm doing all the ordering. Mm-hmm. Everything will be at the door. And y'all don't need to go nowhere for nothing. Okay. So my yeah. mother's a very good support system. And during that time, could you think of anybody else that was supportive to you? Um, I could say my aunt. We spoke a lot. Okay. My aunt lives in Florida. So I can really say she really quarantined. Like, she's literally just going back to work. Are you serious? Back in the office, yep. She works for Geico. They literally, like, back in the office three days a week now. So, and what, it's just been three years? Mm-hmm. So can you imagine somebody really being in the house for three years? Oh, Cause she she did some she managed a lot of ordering but mm-hmm. it it really was a lot of self care for her because she lost a hundred pounds. Oh my goodness! Cause she had asthma so she really dived into the things that mm-hmm. milk and like the things that you're not supposed to eat and yeah, stuff. Yeah, immune system building that making she, it stronger. Yep, yeah, she lost a hundred pounds. Oh my goodness! Mom, and I just seen her actually for the first time in November since COVID. Mm-hmm. Come, I, mean, I couldn't even recognize her. Like she, of course, she sent me pictures and things yes. like that. I didn't even know who she was. Mm-hmm. Completely different person. Oh my goodness! So oh. some people it did good for them, mm-hmm. and some people I feel bad for the ones who didn't. You know yes. what I mean? But I guess it worked hand in hand. Yes, and you know, COVID or the pandemic. When people think about it, it's not always you know a negative thing. Mm-hmm. You know, something I feel like a lot of people it sat them down. Mm-hmm. Ones who needed to relax, it really sat them down, one way or another. Yes. Now, what are some things that you've learned from COVID or from the pandemic? God working mysterious ways. Because if you need to sit, He will sit you and find a way. Um, I learned patience. Um, like you said. Uh, enjoy the little things not even just family just being able to wake up in the morning go outside just the luxury of going to the store yes just that <laughs> going to the mall you know the, the, those little things I cherish a little bit more now going to the car wash <laughs> just a little like yeah. and those are the little things that make me happy like mm-hmm. going to the car wash not even going to get my hair and nails done well my hair wash I love my wash lady, lady. <laughs> <laughs> but just the, like you said just it's the more the littlest things that you didn't even realize we just I ain't gonna say take for granted that we just do and not think about so having all those stripped away was the, the adjustment oh, yeah, I could understand that now during that time I do remember or I can recall you saying that you know Coming home from work, you know, you shut the door and things like that. Like, so how was work life for you um, during that time? Scary. Because I, I wasn't in the hospital or nothing, but we, I was in a group home setting. So even though, and I worked in the COVID house, per se, um, just it made me, my own health issues of diabetes and things like that. I don't want to say catching COVID, but being right face to face with somebody who has COVID mm-hmm. and having to help them with everyday living. So pretty much scary. <laughs> I can just only imagine how that was for you. <sighs> as soon as you walk in, having a gown. Well, I, I, I had glasses, so we just had the face shields and things, but people who didn't have to, you know, wear the mask and everything. And, but it's like, I'm a, I got to do what I got to do type person. So I may not like it, mm-hmm. but this is what I got to do. Yes. And I know you spoke on uh, the lack of resources as well mm-hmm. during that time. So was that from the company that you worked for or just a shortage in? Shortage. Yeah, for shortage. And then I think at that time it was like what the N95s or mm-hmm. something like that. And then yes. it slowly or surely went to everything else, but the shortage. Okay. And what do you think the future will look like? I haven't thought that far yet. It's 
to my the world. Yes. For me. Um honestly I haven't thought that far because I'm just enjoying the now mm -hmm. after everything that has happened. Um and that's one of the things I'm trying to like really explain to my kids because my daughter's so like rigid and I'm playing my life and I'm like mm -hmm. Especially after COVID, you can't go by your... It's good to have a, a, a baseline mm -hmm. of what you want to do, but just always remember things could happen. Shut down. You could get sidetracked. Not sidetracked, but life could happen. And COVID was life. It was a, a big experience. So I can't even... Honestly, I can't even really answer that question. I just enjoy now. <laughs> no, I completely understand that. So I do want to reflect on the EM app. Um, if you could share some things that um, you wrote for me. Um, I wrote straightforward. Wife and mom, beautiful, dependable, caring, stern, and warm on my fingers. In the palm, I wrote relocation. Growth, grief, and outside I work, work in my family. Gotcha. Okay, and I want to dive in as far as you saying um, growth. So speaking on that, that's something that you gained mm -hmm. during um, the pandemic, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, could you elaborate? Um, I was always one. I think it's the environment I was raised and the time I was raised. Depression. I always felt depression was a luxury. I don't have time to be depressed. Mm -hmm. Don't get me. I went through a postpartum after having my second daughter, but I swear it was like two or three days because I had to. You got to step out of it. You got shit you got to do because mm -hmm. ain't nobody gonna go out there and feed these kids. So I can say I grew from that. I understood it a little bit more because. Having everything, something as small as walk into the store stripped from you, it can put you in a depression state of mind. So it's not it's not a luxury. Somebody who does have everything, which I don't feel I have everything, but I have my basic needs and wants. I have a house, I have a car, I have family. You can still be in a, have an off balance because things got stripped away from you. So that's when I could say I, I grew out that naive mm -hmm. state even with now my daughter going through her own challenges and things like that when i first found out i wanted to be oh you got to be depressed enough. you're 13 mm -hmm. you ain't got no bills you ain't got nothing but she did go through a change mm -hmm. and during the time that she went through a change she was just you know not sheltered but she was sheltered away from life so she kind of got into a dark space. So I grew out of that. I, I, I learned something different. And I feel like it's a positive thing because even though you are a parent and the kids who are growing up now, I can't grow up right now. I can't see myself in high school mm -hmm. right now because all the different non-binary and all the different things that I, I don't understand it. You're a girl, you're a girl. You're a boy, you're a boy. So I guess I have grown. And I am happy the age that I have my kids because I'm growing with them. Because I feel like if I had a baby right now, mm -hmm. I would be so shut off to the world now on the littlest things. Mm -hmm. But I can say I'm, I'm growing each day. I'm learning. I've always been such a quick firecracker. Mm -hmm. I could go from zero to 90 real quick. Mm -hmm. But now I'm just like, whatever. <laughs> I leave people where they at. Like, I give my advice. You want my advice? No? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> or sometimes if, if I care, like, I'm going to give you, you know what I mean? My advice, I talk things more of a talker now. I don't hold a lot in. So I feel like I'm growing more and more um, on a lot of things. Okay. And is there any advice that you would like to give um, for anybody that might be going through something similar to you? Or um, if this was to happen, you know, years later, is there any advice that you would share to help the next person? It's okay to not be okay. I've learned that. It's okay. If you need to talk to somebody, I still feel like I need to talk to somebody because I'm still harboring things from losing a, a parent, 
So it's like, it's okay to not be, it's okay to take a mental day. I never heard of a mental day mm -hmm. until recently. Not recently, but like, like I said, my kids. Albums was cut. We cut. It's a mental day now. But whatever. It's okay. Mm -hmm. Take that time for yourself. If you are overwhelmed, take that time for yourself. So every day I have to count to 10. Most of the time before I go to talk to somebody else, I count to 10. Everybody is different. You got to perceive people different. You got to know who you're talking to. It ain't what you say, it's how you say it. Because sometimes I even start off, I may come off strong, that's not my intent, but give, <laughs> you know what I mean? This is the only way I know how to say it. Or sometimes I'll be like, you see, I walk away, I come back. Yeah. All right. Or you, well, good morning. And yeah. then you start. Because <laughs> I, I feel like that sets the tone. Mm -hmm. Like, I always was raised, wherever you come into, you say good morning. You're in the car, somebody's house, that's just rude. Because mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll just start talking, I'll be like, wait, good morning. <laughs> you good? You straight? All right. Then I get into everything. Because it's all about setting the tone. And I'm big on first impressions and everything like that. But it's okay to not be okay. Yes. Talk to anybody. And I'm a big person on, because even just saying good morning, you never know if you, you're saving somebody's life. Mm -hmm. Or how are you? You may not really mean it, but because I, I don't, it don't happen to me before. I have to ask somebody, how you doing? And it just started yeah. crying. Mm -hmm. It just all came out. And that person was about to hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. And you never know if you're saving somebody's life that day. Well, just be calm, even if you really don't mean it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you never know. Definitely. And is there anything else that you would like to share as far as your experience or anything else that you would like to share? With COVID? Yeah. I didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Okay. Well, Ms. Jessica, we do appreciate you. The Living Archives team does appreciate you taking the time out. Yes. No problem. <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.